Namaste viewers. We welcome you all to our celebration of International Yoga Day. United Nations proclaimed June 21st as the International Day of Yoga with a proclamation in 2014. And with that began an annual celebration of this day from 2015. Today is an auspicious day. It is the longest day in Northern Hemisphere, which also marks the beginning of summer. We are proud to present two inspiring yogis from New Jersey as part of our celebration today. We will begin with Jaydev Omji, who is the founder of Princeton Yoga Community Center. Sri Jaydev is a disciple of the great yoga sage, Sri Swami Sachidanand, who is also the founder of Integral Yoga International. Jaydev Omji will explain to us the essence of yoga and how it connects our mind, body, and our emotions. Well, I, I love that there's an International Yoga Day, that the UN decided to do that, I think, at the initiation of the, the uh, Indian ambassador. And it was embraced by the UN and worldwide. Uh, it's just so appropriate and fitting for the world to be celebrating yoga and honoring yoga. Uh, yoga has spread throughout the world. Certainly my teacher, the founder of Integral Yoga, Swami Sachidananda, uh, was one of the principal people, not the only one. There were a, a group of really great yogis who came into the world close together with one another and it, they were moved in their heart to, to make yoga spread throughout the world and they were very effective. I mean, Swami Satchidananda, one of his missions was to make yoga part of everyday life, not something for yogis in the caves and in the mountains, and, but something to be part of everyday life. And he didn't leave his body until he'd fully succeeded in that mission. I mean, now yoga is there in movies and books and advertisements. You see yoga everywhere. However, with yoga becoming popular, most of what people understand of yoga here in the West is what in the yoga world is called hatha yoga, the yoga which uses postures, asanas. And it's wonderful and very good for you, for, for, you, for us, for, the, for everyone. And people have mistakenly come to understand yoga as merely something that will be good for your health and your mind. And it is good for your health and your mind, and those are great benefits and very valuable and useful. The, the medical communi community uses it. Businesses now, corporations use it for their employees to uh, take on a, a peaceful, uh, calm, focused, attitude and energy so they're happier at, at their work and work better together and and are more productive and yoga is good for that and the medical community has embraced it quite uh, richly and fully because they've seen how beneficial it is for bringing about healing and good health and even avoiding getting sick in the first place. So yoga is really good for people and they see that and that's wonderful. However, it's even better if people come to understand the actual purpose of yoga. The word yoga means union, to unite. And the union that yoga is designed to bring about is the union of our individual ego-centered sense of self that embraces this body and mind in this time and space. <clears throat> when we think of me, ourselves, 
we normally think of our body and mind and what's going on in our time and space, this finite sense of self. But uniting the finite self with our infinite self, the self of all, is what the union of yoga brings about for us. And when we have that union, this beautiful union of the finite self with the infinite self, then though we still have our individuality, separateness is completely dissolved. There's you and I get to be individuals so we can be in relationship and love and play and have all the adventures and the explorations and do service and learn and all of that. But the sense of separateness is gone. So now, naturally, we care for one another. Love your neighbor as yourself, we're told. The mystics have shared this great teaching. Jesus in his teachings said the two greatest the two greatest things for us to learn are one to love God as the ultimate goal of our focus of being and secondly to love our neighbor as ourself now you might think well I have to love myself that's a good thing to think and you should love yourself but when you love your neighbor as yourself, it's not merely loving your neighbor as much as you love yourself. It's actually loving your neighbor as yourself. No more separation. We are all here as one. Even those people you don't like, you still get to love them. Love and like are not synonyms. You can dislike someone, but you still want to love them and care for them and understand that they, too, are part of the self of all. And everything is. And when you come into yoga, when this happens for you, you have this beautiful, beautiful experience. And it's spread throughout the whole world. And the more people start to do yoga, all the different types of yoga, all the different schools of yoga, the different branches of yoga, as people take that on and embrace it, our entire world is going to change. We're going to blossom forth into this beautiful place where we really do respect one another, love one another, care for one another, make space for one another, play with one another, let people be different and individuals and without being bothered about how people do things differently and think differently, instead just love each other and appreciate that. It would be a real drag if we were all identical. We wouldn't like that for a moment. We've already got enough of ourselves just with ourselves. <laughs> That's enough. We want something different and we get that from one another. So let's appreciate one another, being different from one another. That's part of the beauty of it. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, the work with asanas in the whole branch of yoga was just a small portion of yoga. And now, because the West embraced yoga and embraced it primarily in the hatha yoga approach using the body and the postures, the asanas, to bring about yoga, this science of the union, yoga is union. But there are many, many different approaches in yoga to bring about the union. Certainly, there's the Hatha Yoga, which is part of a larger branch called Raja Yoga, the royal path. And then there's a devotional approach to yoga, doing chanting and worship services. This is called Bhakti Yoga. And then there's an intellectual approach to yoga where you ask the question, who am I? What is all of this? What's going on? And you stay focused on that inquiry, that self-inquiry. And that also will take you to the union. And then there's doing selfless service. Just doing service because it's what seems the right thing to be doing. This is called karma yoga. 
So there's karma yoga, there's bhakti yoga, the yoga of the heart. There's jnana yoga, the yoga of the intellect, of wisdom. There's raja yoga, the royal path, with hatha yoga, where we use the body to come into the union, the yoga. So there's lots of types of yoga. Uh, there's chanting, and perhaps the most practiced yoga in the world is not asana, but actually working with mantra, with sound formula, working with sound. That's probably the most practiced yoga, repeating a mantra, a sound formula. It's very easy to do. It's very effective. You can do it while you're riding in the car. You can do it while you're taking a shower. You can do it while you're lying in bed. You can do it while you're waiting for something to download. You can even do it silently while you're chewing your food. I mean, there isn't any other yoga so accessible to take advantage of and use, and it's very effective. So there's all these different types of yoga that we can use and take advantage of. And we also, in this time that we're in right now, with the internet, and we can, we can see the great yoga teachers and share, hear their teachings and learn about yoga and take workshops with them and have them guide us and, and lead us in practices all the time, anytime we want. And this is a great, great benefit of our time. So our world is transforming. And yoga is a big element to bring in about this beautiful transformation that we're going to see blossom forth for the benefit of all now. Well, yes, you can. Anyone can do yoga at any age and no matter what shape and condition their body happens to be in at the time. You can do yoga. There's a lot of different types of yoga, things you can do. You can work with just the breathing. You can do a whole lot of things with breathing. This is pranayama. You can work with sound, working with sound formulas, mantra, japa, repetition of a sound formula. You can simply study and read scripture, and that too is a yoga. These will all take you to the union, the yoga, and bring you into that place where you go beyond separateness and into the union. Uh, so anyone can do that. And Whatever your age is, whatever your health is, there's some yoga, your body. Yes, it's true. And some people are drawn to do yoga because they like to be younger looking and, and uh, have their body healthy and, and, and look nice and have good energy. And some people like to do yoga so that their mind gets strong and clear. Uh, and they're more efficient and effective in the things they approach. And yoga will do all of those things. And it's fine if you're drawn to do yoga for those things. Whatever draws you to yoga, hooray, because it's good for you. But the real purpose of yoga is the union. And when that happens for us, we find this connection with our innate sense of happiness and joy and peace and love. The bliss, that bliss, that peace that passes all sense of understanding. That's what happens for us with yoga and anyone can start yoga at any age, wherever you're at. As I mentioned before, Hatha Yoga is the yoga that uses the body to, to bring about and move into the union. And hatha means the sun and the moon. And if you, for a moment, if you were to take your arm and grab hold of one wrist, take the other hand in front, you can do this while you're watching. Just grab hold and now pull as hard as you can. And when you do that, the arm that you're pulling tightens up against the effort. That's natural. That's actually the principle of strain. Now, if you take the same wrist or the other wrist, I don't care, and now instead of pulling as hard as you can, just pull gently and steadily. And now you find the arm that you're pulling against surrenders into it, and you get to just keep pulling, and it goes further and further. This is the principle of hatha, relaxing into a steady effort. That's what hatha means relaxing into a steady effort. And when you learn to do it 
with your body in an asana practice, in a yoga class or a yoga personal practice, when you learn to do that, your approach will shift so that now you approach everything in your life as hatha, where you relax into a steady effort. You don't strain. You avoid the strain. You're going to find that when you do asanas like this, that naturally your breath will start to help you and assess, and, and assess what's going on and guide you. So pay attention to your breathing and your hatha practice. It will really help you. It'll show you for overdoing and then you back off a little. It'll show you how to go deeper and further into your practice. We have someone here who's a great Hatha Yogini and she's going to demonstrate some postures for you. This is Parvati Savannah Magnella and you're going to really have a treat getting to see her in her practice.
हरि ओम सदगमयोम ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मात गमय हो शांति 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 This is a chant from the oldest written scriptures on the planet, the Upanishads. It means lead us from unreal to real. Lead us from darkness to the light. Lead us from the fear of death to the knowledge of immortality. Om shanti, peace, peace, peace. Yoga is a holistic and mindful practice i hope you all connected with shri jaydev om's techniques of hatha yoga of to increase mobility and flexibility and connecting with your body meditation and yoga have subtle differences however they both have an integral connection and with that i'd like to welcome our next guest uh, who's a meditation expert and guru she practices and preaches mindfulness meditation and yoga workshops her workshops are designed to help understand and cultivate moment to moment awareness about our body and our breathing she teaches um in new jersey and we'd like to welcome ek healer popularly known as Ekta Gupta Thank you Subarna for such a beautiful introduction Namaste I am Ekta Gupta I have been practicing Reiki for last 10 years I am a yoga instructor and a mindfulness meditation teacher I welcome you all viewers to the Mana TV International celebrating the Yoga International Day today So before I talk about the mindfulness meditation let me give an analogy When we eat food whatever is extra food has to come out of our body within 24 hours same thing with water when we drink after 4 hours it has to come out and even breath it has to come out after 1 minute or 2 so we these are the physical things we know and we understand but what about your thoughts they have to come out also if they don't it can actually go in your weaker part of your body like your lower back your knees and it can start becoming a blockage and slowly chronic pain so in the simplest word mindfulness means maintaining a moment by moment awareness of our thoughts emotions and sensations mindfulness can support and sustain by you by helping you manage the stress of today's world mindfulness has been shown to have positive impact on stress attention and even relationship it also helps you to focus more less emotional reactivity and more cognitive flexibility so when you are doing the mindfulness meditation of course you are working on your breath breathing exercise can help you to relax deep breathing exercise is one of the best way to lower the stress in the body this is because when you breathe deeply it sends a message to your brain to calm your uh, senses down and relax So when you smile your brain your brain releases tiny molecules called neuropeptides to help fight with the stress then other neurotransmitters like dopamine and endorphins come into play they are the mild pain killers and antidepressants so today i'll guide you for a mindfulness meditation for 10 minutes and this meditation you can do any time of the day when you are feeling disconnected So let's begin. So before you enter into this mindfulness practice, find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Once you settle in, 
take a deep breath and long exhale closing your eyes your hands on your knees palm facing down gently move or adjust your body as needed to increase your comfort level relaxing into the moment feel gravity's pull as the weight of your body makes contact with the ground below you draw another deep breath from your nose and exhale from the mouth with the sound deeply as you drop into the moment repeat this breath few times with me inhale and long exhale Should you notice any bodily sensations simply take a note in your mind you might even say hello to your body and say that that i am here with you thank you so much for serving me well it's time to give full attention to your body there is nowhere else to go there is nothing else to do at this moment just be with your body notice what you are noticing and then letting it go now as you are fully deepened into today's practice begin by following the breath inhale and exhale there is no need to change anything you are following the natural rhythm of your breath be with rising and falling of your belly now place your right hand or right palm on your belly and feel the rising and falling of your breath and at this time left palm on your chest the center of your heart feel the air passes through your nostrils in and out in and out be with your breath following your breath as it comes and goes now bring your attention to your feet sense into the feeling of having a strong foundation and deep connection to the earth imagine that connection lengthening as your body further relaxes any unwanted energy or thought gently drain through feet if your mind begin to wander bring your focus back to the flow of your breath from here move your attention from the feet to your calves just be with your lower half of your body at this time now moving along to your torso center of your attention on your belly your gut provides valuable information to you on daily basis information that flow into your brain whether you are aware of it or not placing your both hands on gut notice what you notice be with your gut in this moment if anything arises a sensation an image a voice just be with it at this time giving your belly a gentle embrace shift your focus to the core of your heart allowing your heart to beat in the natural rhythm feel the beat of your heart with your hand and listen within 
listen deeply be with whatever arise and if your mind wander again bring your attention back to the flow of your breath now shift your focus to the crown of your head as you open the open your focus to the spaciousness of the sky above a sky that is unlimited in its potential and endless in its possibilities just like you taking a gentle breath and exhale on behalf of mana tv international i'd like to thank you all for joining us in our celebration uh, and our special program on international yoga day i hope you will be able to connect with your mind body and emotions stay well stay blessed